Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul Neal, and I'm here to give my reaction from Mick McCarthy's 25-man squad to face Switzerland and Bulgaria. So we'll obviously start with the goalkeepers, and you have Darren Randolph in goal playing with Middlesbrough. He's had a bit of a mixed start of the season, but you know when it comes to representing Ireland, I don't think there's anyone better in goal at the moment than him. He's uh, he's never really let us down, and he's been fairly solid throughout. And I think he'll be the goalkeeper at least for the game versus Switzerland uh, they might mix it up when it comes to the Bulgaria game which you can imagine just trying to give other keepers game time uh, but for me Darren will be you know our number one or number 23 um, whatever way you want to look at it but he'll be our first choice goalkeeper then you have Kieran Westwood uh, at Sheffield Wednesday which he missed out last time through an injury or he's getting surgery or something done so it makes sense again he was doing really well with Sheffield Wednesday last season and they seem to be doing quite well so far this season as well and um, you know two experienced goalkeepers in there and then you have Mark Travers who just came off the back of um, a penalty shootout win last night in which he saved three penalties and was the hero of the night for Bournemouth and it's great to see a young Irish goalkeeper getting opportunities he obviously made his debut last season against Spurs but it's great to see him getting more opportunities albeit it's in the cup but you know he's going to learn from these experiences he hasn't been sent out on loan and he's been getting opportunity to come in and play first team football with first team players I kind of looked at the squad that he was involved in last night or sorry the first team that was uh, sent out to play and you know there was a lot of first team players in the squad with him there so himself and Gavin Kilkenny who was picked for the Ireland Under-21 squad was basically the two Irish young lads in there. So it was great to see them getting the opportunities. Then out of the defence, you have Seamus Coleman, who has had, again, another mixed start to the season. Hasn't been amazing, but he hasn't been woeful either. He's been just... Some games he's looked really good, and some games he's not looked the best. Um, but it's very early in the season, and players are still trying to get fitness and so on back. And I think... You know, he was rested last night in the Carabao Cup and Sadibi played instead of him. So I think the rest will probably actually do him uh, the world of good at this moment in time. And it was a chance, obviously, for Sadibi to come in and get a bit of game time. But uh, from Seamus' point of view, he'll be looking to get back at it now against Wolves. So again, it comes up against his old compatriot there for his position as well, uh, Matt Doherty. And again, he's had a bit of an up and down start to the season just because of injuries. You know, he's, he's going to be first choice for Wolves, no doubt. Whether he remains, he's going to be first choice for Mick McCarthy. I don't think that's going to be the case, but who knows? It will be interesting to see how that one plays out. I do think Seamus, you know, he's our captain and he's the most experienced at international level, so it would make sense to have him in there. And judging by the whole squad itself, it looks like he's going to be very defensive, at least for the Switzerland game. So I think Seamus is a better defender, whereas. Probably Matt Doherty's a lot better going forward these days. There's a lot more legs in them than uh, Seamus, I suppose you could say. And then you have Shane Duffy, Richard Kyo, John Egan and Kevin Long. And probably the two lads, Duffy and um, Egan, are probably playing the best at the moment out of our central defenders. Kevin Long got to play in the Carabao Cup for Burnley and um, with Jeff Hendrick, who I'll come to in a sec, but he got to play... So Mick McCarthy had people going watching them, or else he watched himself. I, I I can't remember. I read either it was him as or him or it was uh, Robbie Keane or Terry Connor went to watch them, and that's why he's in the squad. Then because he's he's been back playing. Mick's biggest worry was that these players weren't playing. But John Egan has really adapted well to life in the Premier League, as has um, Shane Duffy since he's joined Brighton. Has just gone up a level, and he's our best central defender so I imagine it'll be just trying to find a partner for him Richard Kyo solid as always for Derby can't really say too much about him it's very much the tried and trusted for making regards to defence you've obviously Ender Stevens, who again has settled quite well in the Premier League as well which I didn't really have any worries about him midfield then you have Alan George at Ipswich who I know he's playing in League 1 but you look at the difference he made when he played against uh, Denmark and you know who's involved in the goal set up Shane Duffy's goal as well it's just unfortunate that he got injured then because I think he was going to start then against Gibraltar so Mick McCarthy seems to be a big fan of his and um, this shows that he's in the squad Callum O'Dowd at Bristol City haven't seen too much of him this season myself um, uh, Alan Brown scored a penalty the other night for Preston he's back playing again which Mick McCarthy really wanted to see 
and then you have Jack Byrne, which was a uh, I wouldn't say a shock, but for him to make the final squad is a big statement um, in regards to his ability. He's been in tremendous form, and if you haven't seen him down in Talla by now, I'd suggest you just get down and see him, or if he's playing against your local club, because he is just absolutely fantastic. And I'm delighted for him personally, because not only on a personal level, he's a really nice lad, very humble, you know, just wants to get on with his football and. As I say, it's a great statement for the league that someone from the League of Ireland can get into the final squad. More than likely, will play against Bulgaria more so than he'll play against Switzerland. But uh, again, great to see him in there. But I do think there's a fair few players ahead of him in the pecking order. The likes of your uh, Alan Browns and Jeff Hendricks and Alan Georges. I think they were going to be ahead of him for the Switzerland game at least. Jeff Hendricks in there after playing the Carabao Cup as well, as I mentioned with Kevin Long. So that that explains uh, his inclusion there. Hopefully, Jeff can start like, getting a couple more games or at least a game in this weekend before uh, before we, we take on the Swiss because again you talk about experience of players who've been playing for us over the last number of years people are arguing about his his performances I suppose but his performances under Mick McCarthy haven't been bad at all in fact he's probably been one, one of our better players under McCarthy under O'Neill towards the end you know could, could you put the blame on the manager in that position who knows it's just one of them um, then Connor Hurahan or Howerhan sorry he prefers to be called Howard Hinn the Horan. Um he's in there now. Scored two goals in the Carabao Cup as well and looks to be on form. He seemed really pissed off the fact that he's been dropped and really wanted to make a statement for the manager. So he did that. And uh, Villa, I think they won six one in the end and he scored two of the goals. So it'll be interesting again. Hopefully he gets back in the squad now after, you know, his cameo the other night. And he's arguably our most influ influential player at the moment. So you know, the more game time he gets, the better, because we're going to need him against Switzerland, and he's going to be a definite starter. I'd be very, very shocked if he isn't. Then you got defensive midfielders. You have James McCarthy, who's back in there after playing 90 minutes the other night in the Carabao Cup as well. All these players, a lot of them are playing the Carabao Cup. You know, Mick has been crying out for players to start playing games. He played a little bit against Man United, and then he played a little bit against Sheffield United. Um, actually, to beat Man United in the Cup, so he's... Uh, I suppose you can say he played a part in that because he's, he was on the pitch when they scored the winning goal. And uh, then Glenn Whelan, who's been playing for Hearts now, he had a reserve game. At, he played at the weekend though as well. So he's in there getting minutes again. Who against Georgia was probably our best player in regards to just sitting in that position. But I think if McCarthy's fit, he would uh, he would actually start ahead of him. That's that's what I believe. I just think he's more mobile. I know he's been injured and stuff like that, but I just think. Whelan's just more in there for experience, I think, this time around. And if McCarthy's in there, I think he will start in that, just sitting in front of the back four, or, or if it's a back three, who knows what way Mick will, will line up. I imagine it's going to be a 4-4-2. Four, four, uh, then you've got Josh Cullen from Charlton, who started the season really well, uh, playing championship level now, like a lot, of, uh, a lot of our players in the squad, actually. So he seems to be settling in quite well at Charlton. I've watched a couple of his games this year. He looks a good player. Whether he remains, he starts against Switzerland, I'm not sure. But uh, I think he will get some game time against Bulgaria. Um, the sooner he gets capped, I think the better, because people are just going to hang on the whole Declan Royce saga thing again. And uh, then you're looking at James McLean, who's been playing left-back for Stoke. And, you know, they've been leaking a lot of goals. And I just don't see him getting in there ahead of uh, Ender Stevens. And if he's going to fit in anywhere, I think it's going to be on the left wing. Uh, you know what you're going to get from McLean, you're going to get passion, you're going to get hard work. Whether you get the ability to match the passion and the hard work um, to make a difference and win a game, that remains a doubt in my opinion. But look, Mick knows better than me. Uh, then lastly, you have Ronan Curtis who... has had a bit of a mixed season so far with, uh, with Portsmouth. He got off the mark with a goal uh, last week. So, uh, Mick McCarthy seems to really rate him, So, and he's gone and seen him a few times already, so it'll be interesting to see whether he gets some game time as well. Um, good player. I'd like to see a bit more of him. I thought he could have got a move to a championship club, but it wasn't the case. So, let's just see how he does. You know, He'll be training with the, with the first-team squad, so if he impresses, I'm sure Mick wouldn't hesitate to 
play him. But I do think Bulgaria, again, will be the game where he's looked at more. So I could be totally wrong in that aspect. And then our strikers, you have the two boys at Sheffield United. You've got Callum Robinson and you have David McGoldrick. Who seem to they've they've started I think every game for Chef Sheffield United, um, so far this season as a partnership as as a two so, you know that might not be a bad idea where you know McGoldrick is the focal point and Robinson is just a man who if we need to he can drop into midfield and give us legs in the midfield to help out there as well because, it's 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 well the way Mick sort of has played so far it's been a four three three but it's been a defensive four three three so. Again, that, that that will remain. He might have Robinson as like one of the wingers cutting in, maybe off the left or the right. Who knows? But um, yeah, uh, you're looking at that going. Okay, well, more than likely, he said before he likes to stick with partnerships and stuff like that. So the one of Robinson and McGoldrick makes sense because they're playing together at club level in the Premier League, you know. And then you have Shawnee McGuire and Scott Hogan, who again. Given their opportunities in the Irish squad, you know, Maguire has been injured a lot of times coming into the squad or else he's gotten injured after coming into the squad. If you can just try and avoid injury, I don't think, you know, many people would would, would not be happy to see Maguire start banging them in regularly for Ireland. I think a lot of people would love that and a lot of people thought that was going to happen and just hasn't panned out that way, unfortunately for Shawnee. And, you know, as I say, I'm sure a lot of people would love to see him. Scott Hogan, he's got, scored a couple of goals there for Stoke the other week. Again, another player who really needs to start showing that he's capable at international level. Otherwise, you know, the players that are under 21 level seem to have a lot more potential and could come in and, you know, those players could be left behind. You never know what way that could pan out. So that's... Uh, that's pretty much it from the reaction. It's the Troy and Trust. Nick McCarthy had a statement on the FAI website which read, The big thing in picking this squad has been game time for the players. I named a 40-man provisional squad a fortnight ago because so many of the players had yet to play for their clubs. But thankfully that situation has improved dramatically since then. I watched James McCarthy play the full 90 minutes for Palace in the Carabao Cup on Tuesday while Alan Kelly was up early on Wednesday night to see Jeff Hendrick and Kevin Long start against Sunderland. So I did say earlier that it was one of the management teams, actually the goalkeeping coach, Alan Kelly, who went to watch Burnley. Uh, Alan Brown is back in the team and at Preston and Mark Travis started for Bournemouth on Wednesday and saved three penalties. Con Conor Horan scored two goals for Aston Villa at Crewe on Tuesday and Glenn Whelan is playing again now that he's signed for Hearts. It is great to have them back on the pitch ahead of such a big game against the Swiss and then for the friendly against Bulgaria. I'm also looking forward to seeing Jack Byrne in action for Rovers against Bowles on Friday night. He got two great goals in Waterford last week. And he is the form player for Stephen Bradley right now. As expected, Robbie Brady, who scored the second goal against Gibraltar in the 2-0 at home win in June, misses out as he is yet to recover from a rib injury that has sidelined him all season. Fulham midfielder Harry Arthur is absent as he requires a procedure on an ankle injury, while Michael Obafemi, Troy Parrott and Nathan Collins will stay with Stephen Kenny's under-21 squad for their Euro qualifiers against Armenia and Sweden, but remain on standby for the senior games. Um, Mick McCarthy said, I have spoken to Stephen Kenny and it is best for the players in our hopes of under-21 qualification for them to be involved in the Armenian and Sweden games at this stage, added McCarthy. Robbie has been close to a comeback, this is Robbie Brady, uh, with Burnley in the past few days and these games will have just come too soon for him. We want him back for the games away to Georgia and Switzerland in October. Keen to get as many fans as possible behind the team for the Swiss game uh, on Thursday, McCarthy called on the Irish fans to make it a special night in the Viva. I've seen the calls for the supporters to bring the noise to the Viva and I agree with that. This is a huge game, the biggest group, uh, game in the group to date. We need a special atmosphere inside the stadium uh, against Switzerland and the, we need the fans right behind us. So there you have it, it's been Detroit and Trusted for Mick McCarthy. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. There's players there that I no doubt missed out and you want them in there. So let us know who you're missing, whether it's Shane Long, Obafemi, Troy Parrott, whoever. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Drop a like on the video as it helps the channel grow. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.